Well, good morning, you guys. Uh, it's good to, good to get to talk to you again. Hey, did you notice this week and last week, I uh, turned that, that camera on on the phone there to record this, and it wasn't all jashly and jumping and the thing. All of a sudden, you see the ceiling. and You notice that. It was real nice and smooth and just smooth as could be. I finally figured out how to do that. Now, I know you guys are laughing at me because you, I figured that out a long time. But you didn't tell me you figured it out. Didn't tell me how to do it. So anyway, I, I did it all on my own. All by myself, I did that. So no thanks to you. I got it down nice and smooth now. And uh, so anyway, no thanks to you. But anyway, I'll, I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you for not uh, helping me out and taking care of me like you didn't do. I'll forgive you. Oh, forgive. Yeah, for, forgive. Let's, let's talk about forgiveness for just a little bit this morning. Um, in, in first, in Corinth, the Corinthian people were always having problems in their congregation, and they were bickering off each other a lot of times. And Paul was having to straighten them out, and and he would tell them, he'd tell them this. He said, "Now you guys get your act together and take care of this stuff uh, before I get there, so that when I get there, I don't have we don't have to handle all that." See, they they, they were doing things that were uh, causing causing each other, uh, you know, conflict between them. And causing hard feelings and causing causing them not to be what they should be, and uh, letting it interfere with the relationship with the other Christians. And Paul says, Just "Don't don't do that." And here's the reason he says, "Don't don't let that happen. Take care of it." He says this. He says, "Take care of this, so the devil can't get an advantage over us. So the devil can't take an advantage and have have power more power over us." And that's why we want to take care of those conflict things, you know. That's why we want to be quick to forgive. Now, when Peter was talking about, he was with a group and they were talking about forgiveness. And Peter said, he was, he was real, I, I can just hear him saying, well now, how many times should I forgive? Seven times, which is a lot. And Jesus said, no, Peter, no, 70 times seven. Now, you don't start counting. I mean, that just forgive him all the time. He says, I don't, if a brother comes to you 50 times, you forgive him. Just do it. Be ready to forgive. And that's what, it's, that's what he's, he's talking about. Now, we have a story. And I said story, and I didn't correct myself because this is really a story. It's a parable that was told in Matthew, the 18th chapter. And it's about this, this rich guy. And he has a bunch of servants. And he's going through the ledgers and stuff. And he says, oh, hey, what's, what's this, this guy? What's he... He owes me uh, $10 million. That's how much, what it equates to in the story there of t today's uh, monetary value. He says, he owes me $10 million. He calls, calls that guy and says, you pay me right now or I'm going to make it bad for you. He says, oh, wait, wait, give me some time. Give me some time. Please give me some time. I'll, I'll, pay, I'll pay everything. He says, well, I'll tell you what. Since you beg so much and everything, he said, I'll just, I'll just, forget that that money i'll forgive that i'll forgive that debt and so wow cool so straight away he goes outside and finds his buddy that owes him a couple of dollars and he grabs him by the neck and he says you pay me back right now or i'll throw you in jail and so he, he wasn't you know acting like his his master just did so anyway the is the, the people that saw that went and told the master said guess what this guy did he went over there and grabbed the guy by the neck and threw him in prison before he swore he could pay. And he said, we did this. What? You bring him in here. Tell him to come over here and talk to me. i, I got to find out about this. So then he comes in and talks to the, the master. And he said, what are you doing? Taking, taking your buddy there and shaking him and throwing him in jail. I gave you, forgave you all that, all that money. And so he said, here's what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to throw you in. Ooh, he said, I'm going to turn you over to the tormentors or the torturers. That doesn't sound very good. And he said, I'm going to start selling your stuff. I'm going to sell your, your family, your wife. I'm going to sell your kids and everything else until I get the, you know, my money back. Wow. That was, that was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty serious situation to be in. But here's the, 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 the last line in that parable um, context there. It says this. It says, if you're not going to forgive your fellow men, your brothers and sisters, your family, your, your friends, if you're not going to forgive people, then the master, the father, is not going to forgive you either. Whoa, that's pretty serious talk. If we don't forgive people, then, then he's not going to forgive us. So 
we live in a culture that um, kind of has the wrong idea about this forgiving. And that's why I'm telling you about this. We live in a culture that, that says this. You did a number one to me in, in, in severity. So I'm going to pay you back with a number two. And then you, I say, well, if you're going to do a number two to me, I'm going to do a number four to you. And if you do a number four back to me, then I'm going to do a ten back to you. And we'll see, we keep escalating. We're going to... We're, we just get out of control trying to take revenge, and, and that's not what f people are supposed to do. They're supposed to have a forgiving nature. Now, we, ha we have people that, that hurt us all the time in our relationships and our dealings and stuff like that, and it hurts bad sometimes. It really hurts bad. And that, when you talk to your friends, you talk to people, they go, yeah, I know what you mean. It, it, it does hurt, you know, and everything, but you got to forgive them. And, you know, and the people will tell you this. They'll say, well, you just have to forget it. You just have to forget it. Well, you know as well as I do that when bad things happen to us like that, you there's no you don't forget. We're not geared that way. We 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 can't. We physically can't do that. We can't forget it. And what's interesting is 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 this. And people will say this too. They'll say, you know, when God forgives, He forgets. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says this: when He forgives, He doesn't remember your sin anymore. He separates it as far as or left him from the right. See, he doesn't let that come in between a relationship with us. He he puts it, and here's what Hebrews says. Hebrews says that for that forgiveness of sin is puts that sin in remission. Now we know what remission means, right? You go to the doctor and you have this bad disease. He says, guess what? It's in remission. Oh well, that means it doesn't any longer, you know, uh, treat us in a bad way and and cause us all kinds of turmoil and stuff. It doesn't come in. It doesn't come and affect the way we uh, we live our life and stuff like that. So that that goes into remission, you see, and that's that's what that's what it is. When we get this forgiveness, God puts that sin in remission, just like He did the, um, the, in the in the little story we had there. So we have to be careful, you see. When when Jonah was um, was in the whale or the fish, big fish, uh, the Bible says that God remembered Jonah. He said, Rem I whoops, I forgot about Jonah down there in the big fish. So he, I remembered him after three days and went down and took it. No, that's not what it means. Um, even in Noah, when he says he's in the ark, now ark, Noah was in the ark and God remembered Noah. He didn't forget him. He just he remember, brought it back to, to being relevant to what was going on. So when you remember things no more, you just don't bring it up. Now, if I'm going to forgive you, and if I'm going to, now 1 Corinthians says this in chapter 13, says, you know, if you love someone, and this is what love is, this is a love chapter, it says, you're not going to keep track of the rights and the wrongs that are done to you. You don't keep track of those things. Yeah, you did this to me, and I didn't, so you could, that's nothing, you did this to me. So if you love me, and uh, and then we're talking, and, and you say, yeah, I'm not going to forgive you for, for <laughs> buying that sour chocolate milk when we had donuts the last time, and... Uh, and uh, anyway, that's that's a funny that's, that's that's a silly example. But I could do the same thing to you. That was really embarrassing. You guys laughed at me, so I'm not. So I bring that up again. You see, I keep bringing it up. You keep bringing it up. There's no forget. There's no. There's no putting that aside and putting that into remission and letting that not be part or or come between us and our relationship. And that's what we're not. We're supposed to not do that. Now, people will ask all the time. Well, why do why does why do good bad things happen to good people? And uh, because that's what happens to us. And we're good people, aren't we? Why do bad things happen to good people? So you study your Bible, you'll find out they ask Christ, good, good, good master, teach us about this, teach us about... And he said, why are you calling me good? There's nobody good except God. So first of all, there's no good people. We're all fallen people because of the sin of Adam and Eve. And so there are, we, we can't classify ourselves as a good person. So, but the reason that these things happen to us is this. This very reason right here, it shows our integrity. Now, integrity means somebody that's always honest and always does the right thing, an upright person, doesn't make false accusations, doesn't lie. That's a person with integrity. And when, when we have these things happen to us and bad things or maybe bad conflicts with people or something bad happens to us, you know, the, the the reason it happens is it shows our integrity. 
If you say, I'm not going back down to that church anymore because they don't like me and I don't, I wouldn't go back down, shows that you don't have any integrity. That's called a lack of integrity. But if you're forgiving in nature and you're, that's what, who, who you are and you forgive that, then you have integrity. And that's why these things happen. So you look at yourself. Yeah, so-and-so did something bad to me, so I'm never going to talk to them again. I'm not going to send them a Christmas card anymore. That shows you don't have any integrity, your lack of integrity. God's people should be people of integrity, okay? I have a biker friend. His Harley, and he's got tattoos everywhere, got chains hanging off of him. And, and uh, he's a friend of mine. I mean, we talk Bible quite a bit. And he looked at me one time and said, uh, Yeah, I said, you, you don't go out and drink. <laughs> You don't smoke, and you don't go out hanging out with the girls, and you don't do drugs with us. You don't go out and party at the bar. What kind of man, man are you, you little wimpy character? And uh, so I looked at him right square in the eyes and got his face, and I said, well, you can't do it. And he stopped for, I thought he was going to whip me for a minute. He said, you know what? I can't do that. And he couldn't do it. See, a person of integrity, it, comes, it shows your lack of integrity, or if you have integrity, by what you do. Now you're sitting there at the computer and I'm doing my homework and you look and you see this button that you would kind of like to push. So you look around, see if anybody's looking and you push the button that you shouldn't push. That proves your lack of integrity. You, that you just blew your integrity. You don't have any integrity. And that's what we want to avoid, doing those, doing things purposefully like that, that, that messes up our integrity. Okay. I also had a friend, she's she, they were a bunch of girls, and they're going to go out and party, and they're going to they're going to uh, go off and drink a whole lot and talk nasty and and uh, do things that they don't get to do. She said, you know, in normal life, so they're going to go out and have a great time. And I just I straight, I just told her, I said, you know, the Bible says what it's in your heart is what comes out of your mouth and in your actions. So you think you're someone of integrity? You're not. Because you've shown that you have no integrity. You don't do what's right. You don't do what, you know, the, the good things about it. Same thing when you push that button on the computer, you know. Oh, everybody at church thinks you're this little sweetheart, little sweet girl that couldn't hurt anybody, and she's just so pretty and so, you know, and these guys are so handsome, and, oh, they're just so nice. And No, no. No, you blow your integrity when you push that button because that's not really who you are. So here's my challenge to you this week. I want you guys to... Uh, Look at the people that come into your life and see if there's any animosity or any hard feelings with those people that you can't forgive or you haven't forgiven yet. And ask yourself, why haven't you done that? Why can't you do that? You see, you don't want anything to come between our relationships together. We don't want that sin, that uh, the sin of not being forgiving, to mess up our integrity. We need to be people that, who have integrity and do what's right according to the scriptures, and do be honest about it, and we don't lie, and on and on the list goes like that. And you don't want to compromise your integrity over stupid little things like that. If you're supposed to forgive somebody, you need to forgive somebody, you need to do that. You need to do that. So watch this week as things happen, and notice the people come in and out of your lives, and see if you have integrity, or you're really not the really little sweetheart guys and girls that we think you are, that you, uh, you mess up, you blow it. You know, okay. So anyway, there you have it. Uh, so I ho hope that you can uh, relate to that pretty good and, and notice those people in your life that you have a problem maybe with or have a hard time forgiving. And uh, you can start showing that you do have integrity and do what's right. There you go. All right. Hey, it's good to see some of you last Sunday. About to holler at you and give you a hard time. Hey, what are you doing? You know, you're behaving yourself. Um, anyway, most of you said you were, but I asked your parents and you weren't. But anyway, don't be a pain in the neck to your parents. Help them take care of you. And I hope to see you guys real soon. So take care. Bye-bye.